welcome to a new stream. Hopefully this one will be all good. Um, our last one went, um, like, my audio cut out because it was disabled for some reason. Um, so welcome to our new um, YouTube video with Turnip Berry here. Hello, uh, nice to see you again, and sorry it didn't work out last week. Yeah, it's all good. You know, these things happen, and I explained it in my YouTube video to try. You know, things do happen in this, it's live. I mean, the other week, um, so this is um, her art station here, uh, so check that out. Uh, the other week I was watching a stream, and, um, you know, he ended up playing a video midstream that he wasn't meant to be playing. And it was like, oh my gosh, he did a stuff up. <laughs> so I was kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, someone that's, um, Bobby Chio, he's really great at doing these streams. Um, he does similar, you know, he does like time lapse drawings and then he has artist interviews and things. It was really interesting that he did a stuff up in a video and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, uh, at least. Hmm. Sorry. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, it's it's nice when you're not the only person who's messing up. Yeah, yeah, it's um. Yeah, so last week we went over a few things. Um, so for the audience that don't know you yet, can you um, tell me a bit about yourself? Right. Uh, I uh, I go by the username Turnip or Turnipberry on most websites. Uh, my name is Jennifer Dunham. I am a uh, freelance illustrator, and I am trying to go into the concept art and illustration industry. I've just recently gotten out and started doing this for a living, and uh, this is more or less my full-time job. Awesome. That's great. Um, so yeah, we went through a few things in your last video, um, even though it didn't go that great, really, for the recording part. Um, but we discussed a bit about, you know, Luke, um, you, what mediums you used. Um, so you, it looks like you do mostly digital way. Mostly digital, yeah. I, I prefer Photoshop over, uh, you know, that's my, my preferred drawing program. I do some traditional work as well, mostly pen and ink. Uh, I, I enjoy working in, in you know, monochrome black and white. Mm -hmm. I'm not so good at paint media, but, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. Awesome. Yeah. I I love um I love traditional illustration. Even though I do a lot of digital works, um yeah, I just enjoy doing traditional medias. Um but yeah, it does come down to um you know, the availability to change things a lot and to yeah. And also it's faster for me to do it that way. Yeah. Hmm. Now there's uh, there's a lot of flexibility in a, a digital program like Photoshop or something. You know, the ability to undo a mistake or go back and you know w without just completely painting over the top of it, which is very very nice thing to have. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I always try and find time to do traditional media's. Like I'll be doing a digital illustration while I'm like drawing a traditional piece to start up and then it ends up um, I have to drop the digital stuff to work on the traditional stuff a bit better you know like um, cause at the start of a traditional piece for me or sometimes it's the start of every piece there's that downtime like that first hour two hours or first few weeks or something depending on you know what my schedule's like um, of just sussing out what the actual drawing is going to look like, um, you know, and that can take a while. Um, yeah, and that's a fantastic that's a fantastic thing to do. You know, uh, planning your drawings and your 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 big 
important pieces ahead of time uh, can be really helpful and beneficial if you're doing something big and complicated. Mm. Especially for me, because I always have, you know, I have uh, a few things going usually. Um, I usually have, you know, a plan drawing for either a traditional piece or something that I want to take onto the computer to finish off or something. Um, while I'm during the day, while I'm kind of creating or finishing off rendering something, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you like um, have different times of the day that you're working on? You're doing different stuff, or you're always working on the one piece. It depends. You know, if if I'm working on one thing and I've just been working on it for you know what feels like ages, sometimes it's nice to switch over to something else just to give myself a break or to switch styles. More often than not, though, in that sort of situation, I'll just sit back and take a break from drawing altogether, just to, you know, you know just to rest for a bit. Yeah, well, yeah, you've got to take breaks. That's one thing you mentioned is, you know, you you got to spend some time just not doing art, you know, either playing games or, um, yeah. But, um, not yeah, all... Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, keep going. <laughs> No, no, sorry, lag's getting to me again. No, uh, taking breaks is a very, very important thing to do just to avoid eye strain, to avoid hand, you know, to avoid uh, problems with, you know, the tendons in your hands. Mm. You know, if you've been drawing for a very, very long time straight, you, know, you need to be taking breaks once in a while. But uh, on the flip side of that, I, I feel it is also important to have, you know, the self-discipline and the motivation. And you know, when you're working on a piece that you're being paid for or something, you know, when you have a deadline, when, when you need to get work done, you know, you need to have the self-motivation to sit down for an extended period of time and do the work, you know, as long as you're taking appropriate breaks for your health. Mm. Yeah, it's always the matter... If you want to be successful, it's always the matter of um, yeah keeping at it, but you don't want to you know overdo it so that you know um, things come and go. You know sometimes you might get upset about something, um, like you might send in a project to a client, and then they're like, oh now nah, change this, this, and that, and you might get a bit upset, you know, because you've worked on it for the last twenty four hours or something. Yeah, and then you. End up, I've had yeah. I've had that happen a few times. You know that does happen once in a while, and you know the client is paying you to do the work, and you know that's that's just life. You need to learn how to deal with that. But mm -hmm. I'm not gonna pretend it's not frustrating as 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 any. Exactly, it's it's, it's not easy. You know, like yeah. Um, I I feel like a lot of people. Um, have different opinions about the industry, um, but the really successful ones that I've seen, uh, their opinions are quite, you know, some of them are quite the same, the ones that are actually, um, you know, they put in the time, the effort, um, and eventually something breaks, you know, something will give off. Um, so you, yeah. yeah. Working, working artistically, you know, occasionally you do have to deal with something like artist block or just burnout, where you know you you've been working a little bit too much and you're tired and you need to take a break. And, and you know, sometimes it's not an option because you do have that project or that deadline and that responsibility you need to get finished. But mm. you know, when you can, I think it is important to take breaks and, you know, go play and do something that's not related to Exactly. I mean, I, when I was at course, I could see everyone had different, you know, they had different abilities, um, but time management was one of the ones that I felt was most important because you could see the people that really, you know, they didn't finish a project or when they did a project, 
um, they there wasn't enough time and effort in there because they um, on the last day they might have spent the whole night trying to get it finished you know they didn't plan out um, from the start of the project how they're going to go from A to B um, and I feel you know the process is very important it's not just creating um, the piece as well What, yeah. Yeah. What, what no, you knowing how to manage. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say I asked you about. Um, yeah, I forgot, but I'll uh, keep going on what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, knowing how to, uh, you know, if you've got a long project that you're working on, having some sort of schedule or some sort of plan, even if it's you know just a loose outline. You know, the important thing is to stick to it. Now, the, and doing that, you can usually get along fairly. Yeah, exactly. And I'm um, for me. Um, so Tuna might be cutting out a little bit here and there, but she's coming all good. Um, who was saying, you know, I uh, when I was working on a big project, I ended up probably waking up say an hour earlier to get it done you know like I wouldn't on my weekends I'd usually sleep in until like 9 I wouldn't do that for this project I'd wake up like 8, 7, 8 um, and um, yeah I was listening to one of the interviews lately with Bobby Chio he did a um, schoolism house interview which they talked a bit about like scheduling um, you know some people stay up late and then they wake up later and continue their day from there um, other people go to bed like you know I, I usually like to go to bed by nine and that way I can get up um, get up by eight-ish to start my day kind of a thing um, yeah how, how do you like schedule your days mm -hmm. My my day itself in general isn't doesn't really follow a particular schedule. When I'm working on a piece in particular, I'm I tend to work in blocks of a certain number of hours. So, mm. you know, if, if it's a piece that I think I could could get done in six or eight hours, I'll usually tackle it in you know two hour increments over the course of a day. You know, just mm. taking breaks in between. If it's a, a bigger piece, something that might take you know twenty hours or more, you know, I, I tackle it in you know over the course of several days. Hmm. Um, my day in general uh, is not particularly structured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose because it's it's not like you know process work or. Um, you know, where you're doing this for till 12 o'clock and then you have your lunch break and you do it till 4 or 5 o'clock, you know, you can't really do that because, um, you know, like I was saying last week, there's, I was, I got frustrated with doing anatomy, um, so I couldn't really do much anatomy because, you know, I could only last 20, 30 minutes until I get started to get, um, to the point where I wasn't even doing anything, you know, because I was so frustrated. Um, hmm. So yeah, it's just a matter of um, keeping at it and th just thinking about time, you know. Um, try and think about well, you've got all day. Don't make it so that oh, I'm gonna finish this piece in one day, um, and then you end up staying up all night, and then you know it's like you need a day's rest after that so you you skip out on a day's work um, you're doing it in chunks yeah. like you do it's good um, yeah and I I do in you know I I something that is very important for me is being able to have you know a flexible schedule where it's not necessarily like you know a a day job where you go in and you clock in and you know you work mm -hmm. five hours and then take a lunch break and work you know till the end of your shift. I do like having more flexibility and you know being able to take 
you know, to take the day in a, you know, more leisurely manner. But at the same time, you need to balance that with, you know, getting a respectable amount of work done for the day. So I, I tend to th take things in, in two-hour increments, and I'll do, you know, several of those, or, you know, I'll do, I'll do several of those per day. Hmm. So what would you call a successful day? Um, well, a, a lot of, you know, you know a, a main por portion of my income is I get from commissions. So a lot of commissions are the type of thing that I can get done in, you know, between six and eight hours worth of work. So mm. a successful day for me is one where I've managed to do a commission and pulled in a good amount of money. Mm. Yeah, awesome. Um... I mean, everyone has a different judgment of what success is. Um, you know, for some people, it might be um, doing a good drawing of something or getting, you know, the underdrawing done. Um, but I feel like you should make a. If you're doing like six to eight hour days or something, you know. Um, obviously with breaks or whatever, six hour, six to eight hour days, um, you should make that six to eight hour days, um, quite, you know, the achievement quite good, um, yeah. What do you think on that? Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, that's, that's just the goal that I personally shoot for. Mm. And, you know, it, it depends on, you know, the circumstances for someone who's, you know, it, it depends on the circumstances and the person who's doing it. Mm. Um, I do value um, getting practice in and, you know, studying things and learning how to do things that I maybe have had trouble with at some point in the past. That is very important to me. Um, you know, I like to eat, so bringing in money is great. <laughs> uh, it depends on the person. Yeah. And um, for me, you, know, you want to kind of um, be happy with the the smaller goals, you know? Um, you know, a lot of people get upset when um, they, they set these big, big goals, and then, you know, they within a month they want to achieve it and you know they might have not have an achiever and you get upset it's like oh what am I doing wrong here um yeah and for me an easy way to deal with that is if you have you know if you have a large goal that you're working on uh it, it's 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 sometimes it's easier to break it down into smaller goals things that mm. you can get done in you know a month or a couple of months you know, so if if there's a particular you know a particular area, say you want to get better at drawing a particular, thing, you know, you can set yourself you know little increments. Okay, I'll I'll get better at drawing this particular part of this thing. Or you know you want you want to learn how to draw anatomy. Anatomy is going to take you years to learn how to mm. draw properly. You know if you're if you're studying it. Well, uh, you can uh, you can start with smaller things. You can learn how to do a particular type of anatomy. You know, with a, you know a human mm. animal anatomy, you can break it down into smaller instances until you get manageable, bite-sized goals that you can. Do. So you cut out the air for a second. But yeah, making um, small, achievable goals. You know, and yeah. Don't underestimate what you can do in, say, you know, five, ten years, you know. Um, yeah, it's important to set goals. Definitely. Yeah, and I mean, with uh, human anatomy, I mean, that's a thing you'll never, you never get to a point where you're like, oh, I know everything and anything there is to know about anatomy. You know, there's always something new to learn. Um, whether it's small, a small thing, like what the what the um, toe bone is called, or you know, um, you know, or a bigger thing, 
what how to draw the actual whole pose of a person you know there's always something new you can learn and you'll never get to the point where you know everything um yeah yeah no i i think you know and a, a, a an attitude i tend to take with stuff like that you know with you know you'll never be able to know everything but, but you know you should always be trying to learn new things mm, is yeah. for me personally i'm i even if i'm good at a particular thing and i'm happy and i'm satisfied with where i am right now i'm never good enough you know, there's always something else I could pick up, something else I could learn, something else that, you know, I, c I could improve on. Yes. Yeah. There is always. And that's what sh you've got to keep doing. You've got to keep not just working on, you know, commissions and um, trying to pay the bills. You know, um, there's also, you've got to keep learning, otherwise you will never, like, advance, you know. You'll just stick doing these commissions forever. You'll probably do, be doing the same kind of commissions. You know, if you keep learning something yeah, else. And, and yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you, even if you're, you're doing that, you know, if you're just doing commissions for a long period of time, you know, doing, even if it's just similar things over and over again, you will still, you know, you will still improve and mm. advance a little bit just by default, but mm. um, if you're pushing for it, if you're actively going out looking for new things, if you're looking over your old work and f identifying problems that you have or weak areas that need work, you know, you will improve much, much faster. Mm. Yep, it, it, you will. And, um, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I usually, I try and I do quite a few things here and there to try and improve my art. I'm doing schoolism courses, which are really awesome. I do recommend this, um, schoolism courses, because, you know, you pay monthly for them. Um, you don't have to have debt. Um, it's good for someone that maybe has a job and um, is trying to learn or um, trying to get in the industry. Um, so there's that. You can go out and um, either, you know, for me, I can't because there's not, I don't have, like, conventions or there's no kind of, there are, like, artists out there but kind of not in, um, not as easy to contact around New Zealand. Um, but you could go out and, go to conventions and see different artists around the place. Um, I mean, we do have, like, you know, art shops and people that do that, some fun drawing stuff that you can go and talk to and, you know, um, yeah, just seeking advice from other artists too. It's great to get your portfolio looked at because that could uh, help you too. Um, and for me, it's uh, doing this YouTube is great because I get to meet amazing artists out there. I get to talk to you guys about, um, you know, your success and, um, yeah, how uh, us artists who are trying to get into the industry, how we can, what we can do to get to the next level. Um, yeah, so you talked a bit about your, f your favorite uh, subject to draw as well I have I, I prefer either you know animals wildlife mm -hmm. illustration or pets sometimes the the picture you've got on the screen right now was mm -hmm. a pet portrait I did last year yeah you know I, I like drawing animals uh, I also enjoy fantasy you know uh, creature design making up interesting creatures or drawing fantasy creatures or mythical beasts or something of that sort you know, I, I tend to lean in that direction. Yeah. Well, it's the same kind of direction. I mean, um, uh, probably two, three years ago, I really wanted to get, I still do, kind of want to get into children's books. Um, which is something I will probably keep going for in the next few years. Um, but I like to dabble now into different fields, just try them out and learn different things you know I'm I love to draw animals so that's my main thing is I really like to um, create 
animals and use them yeah to create creatures and yeah you gotta say something <laughs> yeah I I'm aiming for uh, a job as you know a, a, a concept artist for characters and creature design and you know designing monsters or animals wandering around a video game world or yeah, you know, that, that's the sort of thing that I would like to do. Hmm. Yeah, I I just like to create something um, that's you know it's got a purpose. You know, like creating characters for a book or you know creating creatures for a story. Um, I know I like to expand. It's like, oh, what's this interesting character? Has he got more of a background? Um, like one one thing I developed when I was at course was a um, full children's book. It was quite a, a big children's book, and uh, one day I'd like to get that published. Um, but for now, it's yeah, it's just a big um, book that I've illustrated. And it's 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 pretty cool. Um, yeah. Well, I I wish you the best of luck with that. <laughs> One day, you know, it will grow into something. Um, you know, when people get behind it, I've had in people interested in it. Um, and I mean, I could turn it into something more because it's a pretty big book. I can turn it into like a smaller book or. Um, yeah, I can still use it, and I've ha I had lots of fun learning, um, because in that project, I did a lot of character design, and so I did my character design, and then I had to do all the poses, all the backgrounds, you know, I had so much to learn in that project, um, so yeah, it was really awesome, um, doing that. That's why I think, you know, doing projects that are pretty big um, interest me. Um, I do, obviously, most of the time I'm doing one painting or one drawing. I'm working on one drawing um, while I'm working on another. But um, I quite enjoy doing, like, bigger projects, like, that are multiple illustrations or, um, you know, they create... Uh, there are quite a few things to go towards something, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Working on a bigger project, something with a purpose, something that has to have consistency across a bunch of different images. You know, there's some unique challenges in that, and it, it can be a really, really good learning experience. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, with bigger projects, you know, you don't see... Um, you don't see it advancing for quite a while, you know, it might take um, two, three months till it starts getting together. You know, you'll give it some time before um, you start to be like, oh wow, this is actually turning into something good, you know, you want to do that, um, you want to, you know, whereas, you know, if you're working on something yeah. like this piece here that you've got, um, the moon pool, um, it might, you know, it might take you a few hours to start being like, oh, cool, this is actually, you know, working out better. I've got my cool, like, your drawing, um, so say for your process, how do you go about that? Well, yeah, it's, um... Uh, for 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 smaller projects like individual illustrations and something like or something like that, I I generally try and start with the sketch and yeah you know, I figure if the mm. sketch works, the rest of the picture will work. So I I play with the sketch until it mm. you know until I'm happy with it. But yeah, for for larger projects, if you're working on something with multiple entries, something for you know an illustration job or something of that sort. It, yeah. it it can take a lot longer to to start you know coming together and making sense. So you know you have to just stick with it until uh, until until it starts feeling right. Mm. And let's say even with small projects, um, I mean it might be something new for you, like like drawing anatomy or drawing um, creatures or drawing landscapes. Even if you're 
you know, more of a character artist doing landscapes. It might take a while for that to actually turn into something because, you know, it's a new topic. Um, but yeah, what you were saying before, you know, um, definitely sketches and ideas, that's the key stage. That's If it doesn't look good as a sketch, no amount of colour or um, slapping brushes and stuff on it won't do anything to the sketch. It will still look as bad as the sketch does. Um, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, g getting a good composition for a piece, you know, figuring out, you know, what you're going to do, how you're going to place everything, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a very important stage. Hmm, exactly. So I went, I went to school design, and uh, we started out, and we weren't allowed to touch the computer, we weren't allowed to add any colour. We would, uh, you know, there were so many like restrictions to it and I was just like, oh my god, I really want to touch colour, I really want to touch the computer on this, but I can't. Um, and I think having restrictions and illustrations and art does does help um, you to grow. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh And sometimes, if you know, you know, if you're if you're trying to grow and improve, it can be a fun and interesting tactic to impose your own restrictions on yourself. Mm. You know, doing only one medium for a certain amount of time, or or, or, or doing you know without color, or you know, doing things in a certain style. It can be fun to play around. Yeah, and and you do learn a lot. I mean, um, I did one. Uh, last, I thought, no, at the start of this year I did a um, polychromatic drawing, I did two or three polychromatics actually this year and that has really, I think it's really helped me in my um, value skills. Um, I, re I really think I should do a bit more um, polychromatic because um, it feels like it does, sometimes it feels like it does take forever um, to do, you know, the polychromatic, doing black and white, it takes forever, but um, then you can just kind of um, overlay colour and it's pretty much almost done, you know, you only have a few, um, so few tweaks here and there to do, whereas if you go full colour, it's like, well, you've got to deal with the colour changing um, tones and changing, you know, value yeah. and color and um you know changing from also color to value as well like say for this fire piece here um your commission here um you know you've got your tones of the fire and then you've got it from changing from orange to yellow um so there's quite a quite a bit going on here um yeah, so sometimes making it into more manageable chunks, you know, like dealing with the tone and then dealing with the color and then dealing with the shadowing and, you know, it can then, it's easier than trying to go all in at once. That's the way I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I I personally I personally prefer to work in color. I'm not, you mm. know, I, I, I don't tend to work in grayscale very often, but what I'll do is every once in a while going through and working on a color piece I'll, I'll overlay a layer that you know I'll, I'll, I'll check and see what it looks like if I make it monochrome you yeah. know I'll, I'll make everything grayscale and take a look at it and judge you know judge whether or not my values are getting off or something of that sort and then I can correct any errors I might have mm. which that that's a really awesome um, tip there um, yeah, it's something I yeah. should do more often, I think. Um, and I, I'm thinking maybe for the next piece I do, I might do polychromatic first. Um, I created some characters, um, for a challenge, and what I did there is because at the time I was all over polychromatic, um, I decided to, I thought it would save time to me to do um, them all polychromatic and that way I can just overlay color on top um, you know yeah so it's, and that you know yeah. that that can be a good tactic 
but you do have to be careful because sometimes you know a, a color you wanted to have for a particular area you know say you, there's mm. a there's a yellow shirt you're working on mm. uh sometimes you know you can you know when you're when you're working polychromatic first it, you can end up with something that when you overlay color over the top of it it's you know it's too dark it looks mm. like a, a muddy color or something of that sort yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it can usually just be fixed with some simple adjustments, but you, know, mm. you, you do have to be careful with it. Yeah, yeah. It's a matter of um, understanding how they work. You know how each each for Photoshop how each layer works, um, like how overlay works and things, um, and it saves you time um, and things. Because uh, I, I worked in mostly color pencils, so I, I didn't have the option of, you know, I did do, you know, drawings of <laughs> shading first and then went to color. I did learn all that stuff first, and then, but you don't have the option of overlaying color quickly. Um, just to, you know, maybe just to see what it looks like in color, or, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean the main thing now, there yeah. is there is an interesting technique that I like I do actually enjoy doing in traditional media is doing a, a pen and ink drawing mm. you know with you know fine fine lines and shading and cross hatching and stuff like that and you know making sure it's a, it's a fairly stable ink something that won't come up or start bleeding if I get it wet again later mm. And then, you know, when I'm done with the shading and the ink drawing, I'll lay color over the top of it with watercolors. Mm. That can mm. be really fun. Yeah, fun. And it's about it's... the closest thing I think you can get. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it takes... Um, I spend a lot of time with color and um, just dabbling back into just dealing with shadows was a really um, good thing for me to really advance you know my values i mm. uh, and i do i do that did that with traditional i mean i don't i do not start any color until i've got a good drawing um until i'm like oh how do i how do i even start rendering this i i usually know how to start to paint it before i might do some shading on the um idea sketch or something called the the final sketch on the piece of paper before I transfer it to um transfer it to the canvas or whatever however I'm doing it I usually have a really good drawing usually nicely shaded or something before I even start to dabble in color um and have the fun time for me all the all the fun things cuz I love I love you know putting pencil to paper and doing all the colors and everything mixing them all together it's just so much fun. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the fun part. But yeah, the stepping back and doing the polychromatic um, is not as fun for me. Um, but, you know, it's it's a learning curve and I do... I mean, the main thing, I think, to be successful, you kind of... Um, I think you do need to be... Um, you do need a love to learn, you know? Yeah, you need to love to learn. You need to be motivated to be constantly improving and, and learning new stuff. You know, you need to be motivated to be, you know, getting, mm. you know to be getting enough work done to, to work in the professional industry. Mm. Uh, yeah. And yeah, those are, those are all, um, you know ways to go about it I mean mm -hmm. everyone has their own way of um, kind of advancing in the industry and um, but mainly the way the way that I've seen it through watching um, other youtubers through watching other artists and talking to other artists um, I mean some of them aren't you know, everyone's got their own level of where they are. Some are kind of like me, kind of starting to, um, you know, I'm not exactly making a living on illustration yet, but you know, I'm I'm working on my skills. But um, that's, yeah, um, yeah. That's the plan. Mm, that's the plan. That's the thing. You know, um, so 
you know, everyone's on their different ladder, and you shouldn't, yeah, just make sure that you're on your own ladder, you know, you're not trying to get onto someone else's ladder, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone, and, and, and yeah. <laughs> so, what are you going to say? <laughs> Oh no, nothing. Go continue. So I was just rambling on. I don't, I don't know now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any um funny, funny stories about um your career so far? Oh, that's 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 a tough one. Not, not particular. Nothing comes immediately to mind. You know, I, I've I've had a couple of you know frustrating incidences. I have had a couple of really fun, really enjoyable experiences. Nothing that you know I would tell as a funny story as of yet. But I'm I'm sure it'll, I'm sure I'll get one sooner or later. Oh, all good. I mean, I would like to maybe um, have some fun fun stories in here. I, I do try and. Um you know, make it quite enjoyable for people to watch these YouTube channels. Um, YouTube video, sorry. <laughs> I do try my best. Nah, nah, I... <laughs> so what? I, I just don't have anything at this point in my life that I, I feel would be worth sharing. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I'll have some ridiculous escape aid sooner <laughs> or later. I just haven't quite gotten there yet. Yep. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone um, for joining yeah. me. Did um, join me today? I really do appreciate it. Um, anyone checking this out on YouTube, um, please do like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we do have Twitch streams. Watch. Uh, I'm very certain that soon I'll be able to say oh, I'm doing it every two weeks now, um, at a certain time or something like that. Um, hopefully, it can go all good. Um, at the moment, I'm keeping up with it. I'm actually I've done a video nearly every week for the last couple of weeks, but um, actually I'm more hoping to do one every two weeks um, from now on, just so that it doesn't become you know it doesn't become I over overpowering for me and it ends up I have a whole month without a stream. You know it's yeah a little bit a little bit over time. You know, um, so that's been Tuna Berry today. Um, Thank yeah. you very much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, it was very nice. Uh, it was very nice talking to you. Yeah, thanks for that. I really, I really do appreciate you guys coming in. Um, yeah, it's awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. And I, I wish you luck in the future and I hope I, I hope you know I hope the video turns out and I hope things go well. Awesome. Thank you. Well that's been me, uh Daniel Jimson and Turnip Berry. Uh have a great one. Goodbye.